My hair says I'm fierce, I'm otherworldly, I'm out there and I'm not afraid to experiment or to live my life. Uh, I grew up in a very Muslim household, so I was expected to cover my hair actually, but I didn't. I didn't want to disappoint my parents, but I knew I had to be true to myself and my hairstyle is a big part of who I am. I was born in Mauritania, which is right above Senegal. When I was six months old, there was a war between Mauritania and Senegal, so we had to go back to Senegal. I was there until I was seven years old, then I came to the Bronx. Everyone in Senegal looks like me, so <laughs> I wasn't very exposed to other cultures. It was a major culture shock. I was bullied all the time in school for just being from Africa and my skin tone, so it was, uh, it was very difficult and I didn't speak any English. When I first learned English, it was very interesting because all the words <laughs> that, I, that people were telling me, I realized they were horrible things and I was like, damn. But I was really confused by it because I'm like, what, you're black just like me, like why are you making fun? But um, I, as I understood more of like the history of uh, America and the world in general, I understood like why things were happening. The slave days, I mean, lighter skinned people would be inside the house and like the darker skinned people would be outside the house. So like one comment that I remember from uh, someone else who looked just l like me was like, oh, you would be like in the plantation, like you're not a house slave or something. My mom has beautiful dark skin just like me. And if it wasn't for her and her presence in our lives, like I would have probably done something drastic because I was teased so much about my skin color that I just wanted to like not be the skin color anymore. You can be suicidal being bullied that much, trying to assimilate into the new culture that I was in. So everyone had their hair, hair straight, so I perm my hair a lot, which is really bad for you. If I even saw like, my natural hair growing, I would just be like, oh, I have to relax it, you know? I always had weave. My aunt was a hairstylist, so she did it for, I got my first weave at prom. Throughout the years, I started to find my own voice and like started marching to my own beat. Now I make my own clothes, like I made this. I love to make my own outfits now because I know exactly what I want to look like and how I want to express myself. But before, I would just, I would dress like everybody else. When I made the full transition to just uh, rock my natural hair texture was when I went to uh, Peru. I was in the jungle for two weeks and I, I couldn't have weave there. So I was just like, okay, let me just do something <laughs> that's close to my natural hairstyle. I just wanted to be as free as possible. When I came back, I was like, okay, this can actually work. It was amazing. I definitely uh, get more compliments with uh, my natural hairstyles. People could just tell probably that I'm more confident, you know? I think it's a confidence thing and I'm not hiding anything. Like when people see uh, women with afro or something, like they think is unkept, but it's actually not. Like that's how our natural hair grows, you know? Mm -hmm. Like even in school sometimes they're like, oh, you can't have your hair that height, but like that's the natural hair. I guess I wanted to make my natural look be as high fashion as possible, you know? Mm -hmm to be looked at in a different way. I'm embracing my forehead, I'm, I'm, I'm embracing my face. I used to hide my face a lot too, just like try to mm -hmm. frame it. Having the blue is to accentuate my skin tone, which I never used to do. Like I never worked around my skin tone, but this is the centerpiece now for me. I feel the most beautiful when I'm being true to myself and being creative and expressing myself the way that I see myself, like when I'm acting and not reacting. Even when I stare at a picture of me when I was younger, I always look into my eyes and I'm like, am I honoring this little girl? Am I like being true to myself? I was ashamed that I allowed other people to make me feel this way about who I am. But as a child, you don't know, you don't, you don't know any better, so you can't say like, oh, um, this is the way I'm feeling because this is how I actually feel or is it outside pressures making me feel that way. So when I realized that it's not the way I actually feel about myself, that's when I started to like let go of all the stupidity around me. I'm like, if people are just negative in the things that they have to say, it reflects on them. That's what I realized and it's not, it's not anything to do with me. Uh, I feel the most vulnerable when I'm on stage because then I have to find something inside of me. Like I used to hold back a lot, but now I'm not holding back. I'm not afraid to say what I have to say because it actually needs to be said. Basically with my music, like I try to have good messages because I know what it feels like to hurt all the time and like not want to even be seen or be around. I just want people to realize that just because people tell you that this is the way things are doesn't mean that's the way it has to be, you know? Like you are in control of your life and you control what happens to you. So 
once you realize that, you won't let anything affect you. Like, you become unfuckwithable. Can I say that? <laughs> so I feel unfuckwithable at the moment.